Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. Today we're looking at a basic unshifted cotangent graph, y equals cotangent of x over 2. So here's our method. Step 1, find the essential information. You're getting organized. Step 2, you'll plot your base cotangent pattern. And step 3, you will sketch and repeat for however many cycles you want. So looking at our equation, we can see it's following that unshifted general form for cotangent equations, a cotangent bx. So that'll help you with your identifying that first part of the step one. And it may help you if you're looking at this x over two and you don't like that, it may help you to pull out the coefficient, rewrite it so that it's cotangent of one half x. Okay, those are equivalent expressions, but just sometimes it's easier to see that b term out in front of x. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into step one. We're getting organized. a is the leading coefficient. For our equation, we see it's an understood one, okay, wherever you're looking. And so a helps us find the y coordinate for our curve shaping points in our base pattern. We'll talk more about that as we get to step two. We can see b is the coefficient of x, and we worked hard when we rewrote it to pull out that value, one half. So that tells us a couple things. First, it's nice to know that b tells you how many cycles of your graph happen between zero and pi. So we should only see half a cycle happening in that space. And it also helps us calculate the period. For cotangent, we do that using the formula pi divided by b. Do know that because we're dividing by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So pi divided by 1 half is actually going to be 2 pi for our period. And again, period is just the length of a horizontal cycle, if you need to recall that. All right, so now we can choose how to label our axes. With this method, I like to be really intentional about the horizontal axis and how I label it. The base pattern in the second step is going to have four key components. And I like those components to align with the horizontal tick marks. So to get this to happen, take your period and divide by 4. So 2 pi divided by 4. Label your horizontal tick marks every pi over 2. Okay, and then for your vertical axis, usually counted by 1s will work really well. All right, let's go ahead and label our grid now. So starting with our horizontal axis, count by pi over 2. So 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. And we can label in the negative direction as well. So all the same values, just you have those negative signs. So it doesn't take too long here. And let's label our vertical axis as well, counting by ones. So we have a really nice grid set up here. Now, the last thing I like to do in the essentials step is to create an asymptote generating equation. And so there's a really quick way to do this. If you like a formula, it's x equals 0 plus pi over b k. For y equals cotangent x, the parent function for all of these unshifted cotangent graphs, our first asymptote happens on the y-axis, so at x equals 0. And then we know an asymptote happens once a period. And so that's what that second part says, that pi over b is how we represent the period in general. And k represents any integer. So depending on which one you substitute in, you'll get a different asymptote for the graph. All right, so the asymptote here for our specific equation, x equals 0 plus pi over b, we said was 2 pi k. So plug in a few values for k, anticipate where your asymptotes will be. So we know we'll have one there at the y-axis at x equals 0. You'll have another one at 2 pi if you let k equal 1. If you let k equal 2, there should be another one at 4 pi. Of course, that won't be on our grid here, but if you were working out further, you would see it. And if you let k equal negative 1, you'd see another one at negative 2 pi. That's just nice to anticipate where those asymptotes will be. It's a way to double check the accuracy of your graph. So now we're ready for step two. We have everything organized and let's recall the base pattern for cotangent graphs. It goes asymptote, upper curve shaping point, zero or x-intercept, and lower curve shaping point. It's the graph that looks in general like that.
So let's go ahead and sketch on this first cycle or plot these points. We have our asymptote on the y-axis, so x equals zero. And then our first point, our upper curve shaping point, move to that first horizontal tick mark to the right, so pi over two. And the y-coordinate is going to be a. Okay, that's what we were talking about earlier. A helps you set the y-coordinates for these points. So here it is at pi over two, one. Then the next horizontal tick mark, your second one moving to the right of the origin, will be your zero. So that's easy enough. Plot that point there at pi. And for your final piece of the base pattern, your lower curve shaping point moved to the third horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin, so 3 pi over 2. And this time you'll get its y-coordinate by taking the value opposite of a, so negative 1. And you've got your base pattern here for one cycle of cotangent x over 2. Step three is to sketch and repeat, so let's go ahead and sketch this in. Here is one cycle of y equals cotangent x over 2. And now I'll switch to another color. I'll switch to purple, and we'll just repeat this pattern for as much space as we have. So starting our pattern again, we have an asymptote. Here's the one at 2 pi. Okay, that's when k equals 1. And our pattern would work upper curve shaping point 0. You kind of get the picture. We'll sketch in approximately what happens there. And let's work in the other direction. So you can count forward to the left and work the pattern, or you can just work backward and say lower curve shaping point, zero, upper point, and here's that asymptote we predicted at x equals negative two pi from that asymptote's equation. Okay, you sketch in that curve, looks really nice. And if you want, you can show we know that this pattern would continue. All right, so we have about two, uh, three cycles of y equals cotangent x over two. If you want one more way to double check that your graph is accurate, look back to your value b. Remember that one half says we should have half a cycle happening between zero and pi. So if you look between zero and pi, sure enough, you just have half of that cotangent curve. All right, hope this helped you feel comfortable graphing this particular equation, and you can apply this method to any other unshifted cotangent graph. Uh, check the video description for links to more worked examples and to methods and graphs for all the other trig functions. Thanks for watching.